got a card from the housing office at school saying that we're going to be roommates this fall at ESU. I know you're probably saying to yourself, oh gross, I'm stuck with a hick from Sweetbriar. But I hope we can be the best of friends. I just know we can. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about myself. My best friend Cindy lives next door. We've been best friends ever since sixth grade, so you can imagine how close we are. I'm really going to miss her while I'm away. Somebody else I'm going to miss a lot is my boyfriend, Steve. We've been going steady now for two and a half years, and I think it'll even strengthen our relationship to be apart for a few months. But I sure wish we didn't have to be. My parents are really sweet, too. There sure are a lot of sweet people I'm going to be missing this fall. I guess you're probably wondering about my school. Senior year, I was assistant editor of Sweetbriar's literary magazine, Leaves of Truth. I don't like to sound like I'm bragging or anything, but one of my poems won a prize in the Kiwanis Rhyme for Safety Contest. It was called, Timmy Isn't Coming Home Anymore, and was about a little boy who accepted a ride home with a stranger. I was also second runner-up in last year's Sweetest of Sweet Bear Contest. And this past summer, I've been in a local singing group called Get High on God. You'd really like everyone in it. They sing so young people can have a meaning in life so they won't have to take drugs. My main interests really are my pets. I've got two really cute dogs and a cat. There's Benny, Baby, and Martha. This will be my first real trip away from home. I'm so excited I can hardly write. I've heard college can be really wild though, so it'll be nice to have someone like you to go places with. I think girls should be extra careful these days and not take chances by walking around all by themselves. My mother made me promise to be really careful and not talk to just anyone. Remember what happened to Timmy, she said. I'm glad I'll have you to talk to. Oh, by the way, I haven't bought my sheets and towels yet for the dorm room. I thought we could go shopping for them together so mine won't clash with yours. It's going to be so neat fixing up our room. I've been out buying posters all week. Mom says maybe we can even get matching bedspreads. Dorm life sure sounds like fun. Well, Vivian, I guess I'd better go now. I feel like I know you already. So I can't wait to meet you. See you soon. Love you, Jane.
Who the hell is that? You really want to know? Here, read it for yourself. What's this? Read for yourself. Jesus, just my luck. Not only do I get stuck with this sweetness and light for at least three months, I've got to start out by shocking the hell out of her, make her think she's got to start praying for me or something. I guess I'll have to run halfway across campus to catch her and tell we were doing yoga or something. I just don't know what to say. I'm, I'm sorry. I, d I just barged right in on you and your boyfriend. Without even knocking, I feel just awful. Jane, that wasn't my boyfriend. That was the guy of my racquetball class. Believe me, it wasn't your fault. He had no business being up in the first place, and he knows it. He wanted to apologize to you. He did, he wanted me to come down. He couldn't face you. Really? It's okay. He wanted to apologize to you, I swear. He's not my boyfriend. You didn't hurt anything. Oh, Come there's on, nothing stop. for you to apologize about. Hey, Mike, stop. 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 Earl, why don't you meet my new roommate, Andy. Earl? I'm Earl. Yeah, man, so how's things going for the weekend with you guys? Hey, you still got things going for, uh, what's her name? Bill. Yeah, Phil. How could you forget? Uh, I only forgot her name. Yeah, well, things are about the same, I guess. She still sees other guys, but she knows where to get it when she wants it. <laughs> yeah, now that sounds like Phil. Hey, Nero, you still got things going with, uh, what's her name, uh, uh, Christy? I heard she was getting to your shit about those sorority girls, but... Yeah, well, I advised her about the fine marriage of Otto and Robinson. <laughs> Listen, guys. I guess we gotta mainly worry about Randy over here. We gotta find him some hot dates before you impress and take them all. Yeah, well, where do I go to get some action? You know? Well, I tell you, the place doesn't make any difference, Randy. But it do help if you have a girl to go along with you. So I figured out in the bus on the way over here that there are 11 and a half times as many students here on campus as there are people in Sweetbriar. How do you ever get to meet anyone? Well, it's just a matter of probability and a little effort. I mean, out of 7,000 men on this campus, there's had to be hundreds you can get off on, and there's thousands that can't live without you. You just have to go through them one by one until you find some that overlap. It's just that I was interested in getting to know other girls and maybe a boy or two simply as friends. Of course, my best friend back home says that just isn't possible. You know, getting to know boys just simply as friends. What do you think? Well, I guess it's possible, but it doesn't sound like much fun. Well, I think you can, and it can work pretty well. You know, having an active social life outside of just dating. Sure, if that's your idea of a good time. And about boyfriends. Well, I have a steady boyfriend back home in Sweetbriar, so I don't guess I'll be doing much dating. I don't know how long you'll last here, Jane, with him being 80 miles away. Oh, is this yours? Come in. Viv, anybody home? First, that one next, huh? Let's get on. Hey, we got this box, Jerry. Let's see which box you got. Oh yeah, be careful. I think those are the miniatures. They were magazines. Miniatures? Yeah, you know, miniatures. That box has got every single soldier and piece of artillery that was used in the Battle of Folgers Mountain. Preston's got the Japs and the Huns. And what, what was that, Jerry? Are you kidding? The big one, WW2. Hi, I'm Susie Sharp. And I'm Betsy Bingham. We just know you're going to like Delta Pi. Yeah, it's really great. I bet you're nervous. Well, sure you are. We were too our first day. Sure. But everyone's so wonderful here, you just can't stay nervous long. It's just like being part of a big family. Yeah, because every girl's like, well, a sister. But even better. Yeah, because you can't pick your real sister. And we have groups And parties. And dances. And study groups even to help, you know, in case you get a tough class. And dates. Yeah. You get lots of dates because everybody likes Delta Pi. Yeah. Oh, you know, Jared, I never could figure out why you keep all this shit up here. You know, like we was hoping that like, over the summer you had some kind of religious experience or something and replace some of this mess with some biblical miniatures or something. Have a drink. 
Where do you keep all this mess at anyway? Oh, I'm really not surprised that you don't know what this stuff is for, Preston, since you spend all your times with girls or whatever it is you do. Well, sir, since we help you bring it all up here, I move that you let us borrow it anytime we want to. Like now, I need this. Oh, sure. Yeah, anytime. Look, man. I mean, this stuff is for all of you to use. I'm not hoarding any of it. Well, I'll tell you what, Jerry, why don't you write me down for some steel-toed combat boots and a well-oiled whip for Saturday night. Okay, yeah. On one condition. You gotta bring me along. Uh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Phil. Was he for real? Who, Jerry? Maybe who? Yeah, Jerry. Ah, oh, he just got a confused sense of priorities, man. He's really an okay guy. Yeah, you'll get used to him. One good thing to know, just in case, he's our friend. He didn't know any grudges against us. We've dated for nearly two and a half years, and in all that time, he's never even once considered another girl. No, he told me so himself. And as for as long as I can remember, he's either called or come by to see me every day, except for the time his little brother they thought he'd gotten kidnapped. But he hadn't really. He and a little friend of his had stolen a whole gallon of ice cream and went out in the woods and got too sick to come home. It was the biggest thing that happened all summer in Sweetbriar. They, they called out the highway patrol and they had... Anything else, girls? I'm afraid I just couldn't touch another bite. Shall I bring a check? Oh, yeah, sure. So anyways, I was saying, oh, even if I wanted to go out tonight, I couldn't because I'd miss Steve's call. Well. Whatever you think, but if you change your mind, you can go with Phil and me tomorrow night at the drive-in. I mean, he has a roommate who needs a date, and he's a freshman, so you'll have at least one thing in common. Something to talk about. Oh, Vivian, I really do appreciate your concern. I'm sure almost any other girl would be thrilled, but, well, when you meet Steve, you'll understand. Hey, you with Viv in 207? Yes. I think your phone's ringing. Oh, thank you. Hello? No, I'm sorry she's not in. Hey, what's the emergency? Oh, I was just expecting a call from my boyfriend back home. Afraid that he'll discover that you're going out on him? Don't worry, he'll never know. I'm not going out with someone else. Oh, is he coming up here to get you then? No, I'm not going out tonight. Then why all the fixing up? I like to be pretty for him when he calls. There's the phone. Excuse me. Ah, oh, for Viv? Yes, Vivian certainly seems to be popular. That's the fourth boy who's called her in the past hour. Yeah, well, Vivian knows how to handle men. Oh, by the way, I'm Christy. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what I could have been thinking about or where my manners have gone. I'm Jane McAllister. Christy, I'm so glad you came in here to see me. You're the first girl I've really gotten to know here, besides Vivian. I can tell already that we're going to be just the best of friends. Let me gather up all my little helpers together here now, and we can continue the conversation in my room. It's a little bit messy, but I wasn't expecting company so soon. You should have heard my mom at the night Steve and I had to stay up till past 2 a.m. because Jim's car had broken down and he was too proud to call Steve to come pick him up or help him fix it or anything. You know how boys are about their cars. They can be so silly sometimes. Silly isn't the word. But they can be so wonderful, too. Maybe you haven't heard yet, but men aren't so hot. They get too much credit from society, believe me. Cigar? Oh, thank you. You mean, you don't like boys? In their place. I'm not so idealistic as to believe that we can completely do away with them yet. But I prefer to think of them as a necessary evil. Don't you ever date? Date? Well, I've gone through that phase. I imagine you're going through it now, feeling degrading emotional attachments for them, missing them and needing them. I guess you just hadn't met the right man. Jane, the right man doesn't exist. But I've got one that'll do for now. He'll meet Earl. Excuse me, there he is. Oh, sure. Hey, listen, kid, uh, 
Don't forget what I said. Okay. Hello? No, I'm sorry she isn't here. Okay, bye. Goddamn love that. Still some bitch coming. Why then you lucky decide to stay home tonight and wait for old what's his name to call? How are them born beta kappas or kappa bettas or some shit? Three hours in damn drink stores and hit each other on the shoulder. Shit. They wouldn't know what to do if a girl one came up and bit him on the ass. I won't worry, I didn't try. Hey, Jane, what's wrong with you? Hey, what's the matter? Didn't that guy call you or something? No. <laughs> what a bastard. You mean you've been sitting here in the asshole never even called? Oh, Viv, don't talk like that. Maybe, maybe Timmy got kidnapped again. Oh, my God, he better have. In the night of all nights. Shit, you've been sitting here the whole damn night and he didn't take the time out to give you a call. That sorry sack of shit. Did anybody call? Mm-hmm. Eleven. All for you. I kept a list. Uh, oh, forget that. Well, we gotta do something about old... What, oh, what's that guy's name? Steve. Steve. Some bitch. Did you call him? Oh, no. I couldn't call him. I've never called him. And... He's never forgotten, never before. Not in two and a half years. Well, maybe we're wrong. Maybe something happened to him. Oh, Viv, don't even say that. Oh, I don't mean that terrible. I mean, maybe his car broke down or his phone's out of order. Guys always give you some kind of line like that. Is there anybody you could call back home? Let's see, call your parents. They're asleep by now. Well, sure, there's a friend you could call. Yeah, there's Cindy. I bet she'd know. Well, do it. Let's well, what if she a... hadn't heard anything? Oh, we can give her a call. Hello? Cindy? Yes? Hi, this is Jane. Thank goodness you're home. Jane, hey. Get to the first day of college all right? Listen, what I called about is, well, Steve hadn't called. And, you know, he always calls before now. And I was just wondering if you might have heard if anything had happened to him. You know, I'm worried if he's hurt or sick or something. Oh, no, Steve's just fine. Matter of fact, he's better than ever. Oh, thank goodness. Cindy, do you know where he is? Well, I suppose I could find him if I wanted to. I don't understand, Cindy. What do you mean? Well, when a girl goes off to school, things just change. A college girl can't expect everything to stay the same. Cindy, what are you trying to say? Well, Steve and I had a long talk, and we decided since you were so far away, and since I'm so close that, well, a hometown girl would just be a little nicer. Oh, no. Cindy, is Steve there? Hi, Jane. How's school? Listen up, you prick. You can take that low-down, two-bit, hometown whore you can jump straight up your sweet brown ass. Thanks, Biff. I never could do that. You're all right, aren't you? I mean, you're okay. Everything's, oh, quite a cheap trick. Can you believe those two? You ought to be glad to get rid of him in the first place. And that low-life bitch friend of yours can't shh. Yeah. He was kind of a prick sometimes. Randy, I sure am glad you asked me to come along to the drive in. Well, me too. Sure would have been lousy sitting in the back seat alone. Thea, you didn't tell me this was going to be X rated. Oh, don't worry, Jane or comedies. Don't tell me you've never seen any nun movies before. Well, no, I don't think so. The last movie I saw at home was Hawks. It was so funny. 
about all these camels they had for cavalry instead of horses. Oh, if you like home, she'll love Night Call Nuns. Viv, you, uh, you told me about these movies, didn't you? Oh, don't worry, Jane, you'll like them. You've seen other movies besides Humps, haven't you? I mean, something a little stronger? Well, sure, on TV. See, Mom didn't like me to go to the drive-in in Sweetbriar because they showed R-rated stuff there a lot. <laughs> you mean you've never seen an R-rated movie? Wait. Yes, Billy Jack. That had to have been. The sheriff's daughter got in trouble in the first scene, and lots of people got killed later on. Oh, don't worry, Jane. You'll like these movies. Just remember, they're a little bit different from what you've been seeing. No, too bad it's raining. Too bad. Oh, and Phil, what a nice big car you have. Is this yours? Uh, no, Preston loaned it to me. It's, it's a good car for the drive-in. Oh, yeah. The big windshield. Yeah, and the glove compartment falls down too, so you have some place to put your coats. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Dixie Lee Driving, the home of the finest in adult entertainment. Our first feature, Not Called Nuns, will begin in just a minute. You ever seen this one? No, but um, you all seem to know a lot more about the movies than I do. I'm sure you know the best ones. Yeah, I, I see a lot, uh, but I like drive-ins the best. Remember, I really, I really like drive-ins. I really do. Phil and Biff seem to be enjoying this one. Yeah, Phil really gets around. We, we've been friends for an awfully long time, Phil and I. Biff and I just met the other. Um, wait, listen. What? What's the matter? The movie's starting. Randy was just telling me that he and Phil have been friends for a long time, and I was just telling him that even though we met yesterday, we're so excited about rooming together. Um, may I please have some popcorn? Um, how about you two in the front seat? Y'all want some popcorn? Randy? Do you want butter? Please. Pastor Pearl, what are you guys doing here? Well, we're going to the restroom, same as everybody else. <laughs> no, I mean, at the drive-in. Oh, well, man, why does anybody come to the drive-in? Yeah, but we get your car. Hey, man, we don't need a big car. Hey, we got three cute little history majors out there in the Volkswagen, man. Hey, you got a date? You got an extra room if you need Oh, uh, no, I got uh, Viv's roommate. She's out there. I'm almost done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she must be a real swing if she's hanging out with Viv, man. Yeah, hot stuff. Mm -hmm. I guess again. No luck. Well, I mean, she's pretty. No, oh, she's real pretty, but she's not Viv. And I kind of, I kind of thought Phil and Viv would, you know, get things rolling. Jane just hasn't caught on yet. Hey, Randy, some girls take a bit longer, man. I mean, one time I had a chick who didn't want to get it on until the second feature had started, man. The second feature? I guess so. But... Oh man, don't get discouraged. But the popcorn works wonders. Girls are crazy for it. Yeah, lots of hot butter. You know, that's what she ordered. Hey, hey, that's great. Hey, thanks a lot. I've got extra butter. Oh, oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Viv, I don't know. 
I just like to spend more time and get to know a guy better. Look, he's a good guy. Besides, him and Phil are good buddies. They're old friends. And we wouldn't set you up with a creep. I know, but he's so aggressive. She was so unresponsive. That better be just a temporary setback. I can't stand getting discouraged my first week. Yeah, striking out your first time up. Well, no, I didn't completely strike out. There was one time there when we had this good conversation, and I actually felt there was something there. I mean, more than just physical, you know? What could be more than physical? Hell, yeah, why'd you go out with her? I don't mean instead of physical. <sighs> I haven't forgotten about that at all. I just mean in addition to that. Well, what'd you talk about? Oh, nothing really important. Oh, boy. Well, you know, back home, that sort of thing. Not her boyfriend. Man, that's such bad tactics, talking about her boyfriend. No, no, her dogs. Not Vinny, baby, and Martha. How'd you know? I read the letter she wrote to Bill. Listen, man, talking about dogs will not get you laid. There's got to be something more than that. Well, what do you and Viv talk about? Never mind. Viv just doesn't have all the hang-up chicks like Jane do. Waiting until the movie starts, that's a hang-up? I mean, you and Phil have been dating a long time. I know you're in love and all. Besides, Steve, I just really hadn't dated anyone. Look, would you quit harping about that damn Steve? He's gone, and y'all be glad he is. It's not Steve. I just like to get to know a guy better, that's all. But from then on, they all meet the same destiny. Jane's a freshman. It may take a few weeks. I'll try a few years. Meanwhile... Meanwhile, you're in college. I can't believe you're letting one girl one day get you down. Snap back. How about that piece of ass here in her tube top? Stop holding. Oh, God, she is beautiful. Holy shit. Bill. Without luck, she's probably about as ready as June. Well, even she's not the only fish in the sea. I know. I might bait some other time. You just gotta learn how to have patience, Randy. You're way too anxious. Girls don't like that. I can't help it. I am anxious. Yeah, I know. Although I can sympathize with you after seeing that piece of ass on the block under the bridge. Come on, man. Come on, hell, don't say that. Girls like that put on her for a specific reason. You know you never get a chance to be in it. Damn, give me something to live for. Two somethings. counselor warned me about coming up here and not doing well in my studies and flunking out. They said in high school. I know that. Jane, did you have any male teachers in high school? Two or three, I guess. Do you Why? know how many male professors there are on this campus? No. I don't know either, but I know there's a lot. And each one is like a grown-up little boy. I mean, you give them what they want, and they'll give you what you want. What do you mean, what they want? Well, it varies. I'm usually just flirting and being real friendly in class. 
But we always, always laugh at the jokes. Don't forget that and encourage them. I mean, it's worth at least three to five points on your average. Okay. I thought you meant you had to do more. <laughs> Only occasionally. Okay, today, class, we're going to touch on a topic that I'm sure you're all very familiar with. Social intercourse. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, copulation in rats, and then there are three basic steps, mount, intromission, and ejaculation. And note that that is not intromission, it's intromission. And I think you know what the word means. The next experiment involves, involves putting a male rat in the cage and just allowing this rat to have a good time. And when he got tired of a female, they took her out and put in another female. Poor guy died after about 50, 60 times. Okay, well, let me, let me start with an example. Uh, one aspect of political science which you might be running into, which uh, you can use to determine kind of things going on, is called gerrymandering. And gerrymandering, uh, I can write that on the board if you want me to. Which, you want me to write on? Oh, well, I'll, I'll go ahead. Let me write. I'll write on the on the board. It's gerrymandering. Can is this big enough? Can you can you see that in the back? Okay. And what this involves is the distribution of uh, rearranging of political districts for to. Uh, well, to, to enhance one political party's situation in relation to the, to the other political party's situation in the same precinct. And uh, we can take a, a, a district and, well, it have a little more interesting uh, district. And it, it's just hypothetical. It could be any, any district uh, politically anywhere. And, uh, uh, assign this a number, uh, what it, uh, a letter, it could be called anything, uh, what? Number, letter, any, who, I, it doesn't make any difference. We can call it anything we want. Uh, uh, and just pull one out of the air. Well, here we are on a bright uh, Monday morning. This is Dr. Mercer Dunbar, your favorite economics teacher. And we'll try to sally forth here and get through till Friday and another weekend in Economics 2110. Got the first one here. What do you want to call that? Any, any number, letter, what? Uh, doesn't make any difference. Let's call it A. Students, today we will examine some of the more salient uh, factors involved in the great American Civil War. You see, some historians have recently unveiled uh, unveiled some very salient naked truths about, about this great war. Most important thing was that the South took this war to their breast uh, because, because to them it was a cause of freedom. Uh, freedom. Freedom, ladies and gentlemen, because while the North talked about freedom, that is freeing the slave, to the South it was far more important. Their way of life was threatened. Their very freedom. You know, some historians have exposed um, some, um, some interesting reasons why the North was concerned about the Civil War. You see, the North's reasons for the war may not have been entirely platonic. Might have been because of severe economic reasons. There were several problems. For example, the cleavage uh, in the South which caused opposing factors to, uh, to, uh, to cause great differences, and therefore the South cause was seriously hurt by that cleavage. Oh, hi, Jane. Oh, hi, Randy. Listen, uh... I've been looking all over for you. I wanted to apologize for last night. You know, uh, 
spilling the popcorn and everything. I really felt badly. Oh, there's no need to apologize, really. It's my fault, too. I guess I'm just not used to blind dates. Yeah. I just didn't want you to think like I was this uncontrollable animal or something, you know? Oh, no. I had a good time, really. Really? Really. Those are the funniest movies. Yeah, I know. They're having a triple feature this week, too. Off-duty nuns, nuns on wheels, and none too good. Which way are you going? I'm going that way, back to the dorm. Oh. I'm going over to Harrison Hall. Oh, I got a class. Well, oh. I'll, I'll see you around. Okay. Bye, Randy. See you later, Dave. I'm home. Hey, how'd it go? Oh, it great. My teachers are so nice, and all my classes are so interesting. I just wish I had time to take more. But my guidance counselor back home said it'd be unwise to take more than 15 hours my first semester up here. How many are you taking, Bill? Oh, just eight. I hate to get bogged down with classes when all those new guys are on campus. You about ready to go to the sorority house? Oh, Bib, I'd forgotten. Go to the sorority house. Oh, I had such a hard day, I forgot all about it. Come on, let's go. Once upon a time, there lived a sweet little girl named Little Rushy Riding Hood. It was time for her to go to college to find knowledge and truth. The first day, she met a big, bad wolf, a professor wolf. Hi, you must be Little Rushy Riding Hood. Oh, Professor, what a big brain you have. All the better to embarrass you in class and flunk you with, my dear. <laughs> oh. And on the second day, she met another wolf, a big, bad fraternity wolf. Hello, Little Rushy Riding Hood. Oh, fraternity guy, what big hands you have. Better to put them in places you don't want them to be, my dear. Oh! Oh. And on the third day, she met another kind of wolf. And this one was the worst kind. A big, bad, GDI female wolf. Hi there, little rusty riding hood. I'm the better to steal all the cute boys and ruin the reputation of all the good little girls on campus. Oh! And little Rushy Riding Hood was frightened. <laughs> Suddenly, little Rushy Riding Hood oh, no! spotted something cuter than Robert Redford, sweeter than a hot fudge sundae with extra whipped cream, able to leap over tall social barriers with a single bound. The sisters of Delta Pi! Oh, we were just in time to save the day. Oh, thank you, Delta Pi sisters. And with the help of Delta Pi, little Rushy Riding Hood lived happily ever after for the next four years. And the moral is... Don't worry about the wolves, get a natural girls are so great why we get along like well like sisters so it's really neat all the things we do yeah it's really great hi i'm tammy would you like a cupcake uh thank you have you ever heard about our philanthropies oh bobby henson um, she's sweet why philanthropies are the things we do to help others you know people that are less fortunate than we are i'm from norris i'm studying pre-med hey lewis wow hi i'm you? tammy here have one of these oh. and i have a double major and it says that in philosophy but when you see the expression on that poster child's face <laughs> now it just lights up like christmas here's your punch bag oh hi goodbye hi you must be jane here have you tried one of these hors d'oeuvres yet mm, thank you very much she's sweet yeah i know them both kathy and i were cheerleaders for three years 
It's a real, real play. Hey, listen. Has anybody ever told you about our philanthropies? Yeah. Why, we sell Shriners newspapers, and we make phone calls for the March of Dimes. Yeah, she's so sweet. Yeah, we had a badminton class together last year. She is so sweet. Oh, y'all feel like you have so much fun. And that's what being a Delta Pi is all about. And the March of Dimes, and we gave a Halloween party at the girls' club last year. Oh, Kenny Shipley? Or Stacy Rogers? Every month, we bake brownies for the underprivileged kids down at the Halloween party now. Oh, Fisk Kelly? Or oh, Mary Moon? Excuse me, everybody. Quiet! Listen, girls, I just found out there's going to be a candle lighting tonight. <laughs> listen, listen, actives, gather around, and you new girls stand on the outside of the circle. Excuse me, what's going on? Oh, it's a candlelight. A special ceremony. A girl may get lavalier to pin. Or even engaged. Oh. You see, Lori, over there, the social chairman person, she lights a candle and starts it around the circle. And if a girl blows it out the first time around, that means she's lavalier. And if she blows it out the second time around, that means she's pinned. And if it makes it three times, that means that the girl who blows it out is engaged. Oh, wow. Come on. Engaged. Hi, here, have a brownie. Oh, thank you. Hi, my name's Jane. Oh, where are you from? Sweet bar. Oh, neat. Hey, has anyone told you about our philanthropies? What time is it? 8.27 and count. Shades. Come on, Peter. Is this really as fantastic as you say it is? Better. Oh, man. Do you think it'll happen again, Phil? You kidding? Six days this week already. That's not including the Tuesdays and Thursdays she made famous last year. She's fucking Volkswagen reliable. Time. 8.28. Oh, if only it happens the same way it did Friday. Fix those shades, oh, will She's been practicing since then. Hey, fellas. Hey, guys. I was just headed down towards the McDonald's, and I thought... Wow, where'd you get those fancy binocs? We had to mail order them from California. Wow, 12 power, 4 to 1 zoom ratio. How much did you have to pay for that? You know, I know this little military hardware store down in Kansas City, and it's a real good place for stuff. 20 seconds. Hey, what you guys gonna do? Throw something out the we window? Take what? it easy, Jerry. I must have absolute silence. Lights. Check. Five seconds. Three, two, one. God damn! Right on the button. What are you there looking at? Now? Somebody's watch? Take a look at this, Jerry. Okay. Wow, I was wondering when you'd let me get my hands on this set of glasses. Wow. You see her? Did you what? see her? What? Where? Look, 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 look at Four across, three down. Okay. Three yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now zoom it. in. Okay. Wait a second, I lost the focus. Oh. Okay, yeah. Okay, I lost my focus. Oh, 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 oh holy fuck! Watch the glasses. Uh, hell, oh, she just... Oh. God damn, just like you said. Man, man we can't buy for a room on this oh. side. Damn, straight. Okay, Toots. Oh, oh, make that your decision. Don't be hard. Oh. No, 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 no. Not sexy enough. Let me see it. Let me see it. I like that. I like that. Not that's blue. Damn. That's not your color. That's uh, damn. Oh, no. That's too formal. How about the halter you had last Thursday? It's in the wash. No. Uh, you're right. Oh. Well, oh. Wait, a Wait a minute. What? what, what? Something new. What, what did you sweat in here? Oh, you bet your ass it is. Oh. Look at this. Grab it. Yeah. You're kidding us, baby! Woo! She's on the basket oh, full of surprises. Oh, take a look at this, Jerry. Jerry? Where'd Jerry go?
And like guns and ammo here, that's worth 10 votes to Eddie. And the winner gets a free trip to the city of his choice in the entire continental United States. And you mean to tell me, you subscribe to Wrestler, Guns and Ammo, Master Detective, Swine Flu, and Big Boy, just so we can get votes? Yeah, they're good magazines, really. And he gets to go to Buffalo, right? He might even take me with him. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> God, this is crazy. Hey, what time are Phil and Randy coming by tonight? Eight o'clock. Phil, may I ask you something? Yeah, what? What should I do about Randy? Do you want to encourage him? Yes. No. I may... I don't know, Phil. I just don't want him to think... I want to jump in bed with him. <laughs> I think you realize that. <laughs> Vivian. What? I want to do more, but I'm afraid I'll regret it later. Have you ever felt that way? Hey, there once, in the ninth grade. The temptress and the tempted. Oh, you mean Jane and Viv? Yeah, ignore him, Randy. Preston always wins when he talks. Ah, oh, yeah, Phil, give me a break. I'm taking you two on one. So how's it going? Well, it's going pretty well. I mean, we've been out on five or six dates. Yeah, you still ain't gotten to first base. Oh, come on, that's a lot of bullshit. Do you remember what I told you last night about me back in the room? First base, huh? When we were all Second like... base? Okay, so I've only been to second base. I keep trying to tell you guys, Jane's not like that. I mean, she's different. Don't worry, it'll happen. I'm, I'm sure. What year do you graduate? Not at all, Preston. Randy's just been telling me he's going to give it all up and join the Peace Corps. He can't get Jane to put out by the end of her sophomore year. Okay, so I'm rationalizing the whole thing. I'm desperate. What else do you want me to do? Maybe you should try a different approach. What approach would you use? But Jane is truly hard to say, man. Well, first of all, do you think she's worth the trouble? Oh, yeah, I mean, I like her, and, well, hell, I put so much time in the project, it'd be a shame to abandon it now. Well, you got a date with her tonight? Yeah, we're going over that new disco place. Yeah, me and Viv are going to show Jane and Randy just how the other half lives. You know, guys and girls, physical relationships. Don't worry, Phil, I've already seen that. Every night, we're doing good. So what else have you got lined up? You better have a plan. Oh, we got a plan. It's all set. Um... Phil and Viv are going over to our dorm, right? And then Jane and I, we're going over to her old place, and he's gonna be gone all night. You think Jane will go for that? I'll just tell her that we gotta go someplace where we don't have to watch Phil and Viv. She'll buy it in a minute. Yeah, I don't understand why Jane would get turned on by that. I like to drive in, watching me and Viv. <laughs> Is that a rhetorical question? Or do you really want an answer? God damn it, Phil, you let the ball go right by. 
shithead. Okay. Go on, I'm, I'm interested. Well, okay, and they had to call out the highway patrol and, and the TV news camera came out. Jesus, crowded. I didn't think I was ever going to get served. There's so many people, it's ridiculous. Here. Oh, thank you, Randy. Oops. Oh, uh, that's okay. I'm well, sorry. How do you boys ever drink this stuff? Oh, get used to it. it. Took me six months to be able to drink a full bottle without wincing. When did you master that, Randy? Let's see, what's today? Ready? Two, two weeks ago. Yeah, I wouldn't give him his registration fee money until he passed the test. Well, it's only because he thought I was going through fraternity rush and he didn't want me to embarrass the entire family. Drink up, Jay. By the time you get through a couple of beers, you ain't notice the taste. Okay. <laughs> you only go through college once. That's right, I too. Come on, baby, let's dance. I thought you'd never let Good. You're not trying to get me drunk, are you? What possible reason would I have for getting you drunk? Aside from maybe wanting to take advantage of you later on. Hey, what's happening, man? How you doing? Oh. Having a good time tonight at the disco, all right? And how the ladies doing? Mm -hmm. I hear you be cool, huh? all right? See you in school, man. Everything's under control. I wonder if Roger Roadhouse is going to be here tonight. He's the dreamiest social professor. Hello, I'm Harrison. Hi. Hi. Can I offer either of you a dance? Oh, I'd love to, but I have to go wash my hair. Sorry, my grandmother died. Thanks anyway. Anytime. How oh, long time? You think Randy's got a chance with Jane tonight? I don't know. They seem to be getting off on each other. Yeah. Maybe Randy might have to complain to me for a couple of days. <laughs> Jane's still Jane, though. Yeah. I guess the guy's been good to me. Set me up with you instead of her. <laughs> you want another beer? Yeah, I'll okay. get one. You guys up for this? Does Howdy Doody have a hickory dick? Come on. Give me a pretty boy. Hey, what are you doing? I'm going to talk to you. I'm afraid we've heard distressing rumors to get that young lady here is not enjoying your company and would prefer right? ours. I didn't say that, Randy. Can I have a date, you know? The rest of the evening. That's just right. Me. You had a date. <laughs> Look, hey, you want to dance with her? It's fine with me. I'd be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if she was free tomorrow. To be honest with you, I'm going out of town then. Randy. Just, you know, hey. you know what? Yeah? Mm -hmm. How'd you like to go out of town tonight? We were going to dance for a little while, and we were going to go back to my friend Earl's place, and really, if you want us to leave now, it's... Let me put it to you this way. Yeah? Assuming you wish to remain healthy, I suggest you split now. Can't look at you. And leave the chick to uh, somebody who knows oh, how... Wait a second. Where did you say that you're going after this? Just to a friend's room. Uh, this is a pal of mine, Earl. Uh, Earl who? Earl Tomlinson. Thompson to the T and Oh, hey, listen. Oh, wow. You know, Earl? Oh, well, yeah. you know, listen, man, we're really sorry. We didn't mean, well, yeah, we didn't mean to mess we're it up. We're terribly you. sorry. We didn't realize that you, too, were a friend of Earl's. Oh, yeah, listen. Yeah, we disrupt your evening. Well, listen, y'all have a nice evening, yeah. huh? Listen, yeah. enjoy yourselves. Nice seeing you. Really? Sure, man. Yeah. Take it easy, Damn, who are those guys? Well, they were just some friends of me and Earl's. Pretty who's Earl? Isn't that Christy's boyfriend? Boyfriend? No, not really your boyfriend. He's more than that. You'll meet him. Didn't you see Randy? Boy, he didn't let them push him around. He knew all along. I, I just wanted to see how far that goes. <laughs> Randy, you gotta introduce me to them. 
Shit, Jane. If you ever want to get molested, that's the type of guy you want to do it. Kind of tough. Oh, dear. I got another one for you, Earl. Hope you like it. Oh, look. Hi, Earl. Gosh, I sure have been waiting to meet you. Look thirsty. Oh, I am. Me too. Well, beer will be sufficient. Oh, we drink it all the time. Good. So do we. I really care. You girls want a ball? But he wasn't really kidnapped. And they called out the highway patrol and the. Jane, do you have to tell me that goddamn story about Timmy again? I'm sorry. <sighs> me too. Look, I'll, I'll let you tell me the whole thing tomorrow, okay? Promise? Yeah. happen again. I know. I hoped it wouldn't either. Keep hoping. It's early yet. Randy, you don't understand. I mean, it's all the things that Mama taught me. I mean, boys were brought up differently than girls. You're telling me. What about that Steve guy? I mean, didn't he ever do anything with you? He wasn't a eunuch, was he? Well, sure, we fooled around. But he and I went steady for two and a half years, and I've only known you less than a month. I'll tell you more about myself. I can't wait two and a half years. Randy. <sighs> I don't know. I just need to figure things out, and there's, there's something missing. I mean, I don't know what it is, but something's missing. I know. Don't worry, Mom. Come on, don't cry. Randy, I'm not crying. Oh, I thought this was the part in the movie where the girl always cried. I like you, Jane. I really do. I just... just wish you weren't so screwed up. You shouldn't cuss so much. It's probably from hanging around Vivian too much. What do you mean? I know. It's just that I'm really confused. I mean, there are a lot of things I need to figure out. But I really did have a good time. I even drank part of a beer at the disco and danced a lot. It was great fun. Then, back at the apartment, the kissing just seemed to kind of lead to other things so naturally that for a little bit, I didn't even notice that Randy was starting to, you know. And it felt so strange telling him no when part of me. I don't want to be a prude all my life, but I couldn't just, you know, right there. I'm so confused. I don't know. You know so much about boys, and I just don't know what to do. Get fucked. Christy! It's the only way, believe me. I've seen lots and lots of these cases. It's like the first time you went swimming. You were scared, right? Right. But your mother forced you to go into the water. She threw you in if she had to. I know what you're trying to say. It's just that, well, I don't think I could really jump into a boy, even if I really liked him. I mean, even if I could, wouldn't he lose all his respect for me? Respect? Do you think men respect you? Of course they don't. You're a woman now. You're going to have to find the courage within yourself to face these harmful inhibitions of yours. I don't know if I'm brave enough. 
That's why I'm here, to help you. Now we know that the root of your problem is your sexual repression. Now these things have origins. If we can confront these origins, come to grips with them, we can find methods of cure. Okay, let's begin. Now, how often did your father spank you? Why, never. Daddy always said I was too lovable to punish. Uh-huh. Insufficient anal parental attention. I see, that tells me a lot. That Daddy never spanked me? Is that important? Of course. It's the key to how we solve your problem. Okay. The first technique I want to use is a thing called word association. I'll say a word and then you'll respond with the first word that pops into your mind. Okay? Okay, let's begin. Are you relaxed? Mm-hmm. Okay. Tree. Green. Mm-hmm. River. Blue. Flower. So. Hmm. Screwing. Come on, Jane. The very first thing you think of. Um. Intercourse. You see? Nobody mentioned sex, but you responded with the sexual meaning. Hmm? That's because you've been so sexually repressed that you can think of nothing else. But that's good. Never be ashamed of your subconscious. I think it's time now for stage two. Tell me when you're calm and relaxed. I'm calm and relaxed. Good. Hey, what was that? Now, never mind. You don't need to know. They're important. That's all you need to know. Okay, let your mind wander back to last night. You're out on a date with Randy. Tell me when you're calm and relaxed. I'm calm and relaxed. Good. Now, you've had a good time at the disco, and Randy is driving you, driving you back to his apartment. A friend's apartment. A friend's apartment. Don't interrupt. Okay, now you're back at the apartment. You're inside. Randy's closing the door and locking it. Tell me when you're calm and relaxed. I'm calm and relaxed. Good, good. Now you and Randy are on the couch. His hands are reaching down, unbuttoning your blouse, slowly, slowly reaching inside. Tell me when you're calm and relaxed. I'm calm and relaxed. Good, good. Now, his hands are unbuttoning the blouse, reaching inside, fingers touching, grasping. Oh, oh tell me when you're calm and relaxed. I'm calm and relaxed. Mm. 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 Christy, mm. I'm calm and relaxed. Mm. Huh? The homework is to try between now and the next time we meet to try and achieve some kind of body awareness. Like you were just doing. Yeah, exactly. Only what you just saw was a, a very advanced stage of body awareness. It will take you many months of hard work and discipline before you're able to hear your body as well as I do mine. You're totally deaf right now, but you show the necessary determination. To begin with, what size shoe do you wear? An eight. Okay. From now on, you'll wear a, uh, a six and a half. But Christy, I need to wear an eight. Do you think you know what you need? Feet can't talk through a size 8 shoe. Feet won't talk if you indulge them. Hey, Jane. Hey, Viv. How's your homework coming? Shit, I don't even know why I bother. Oh, Dr. V will give me a name there for just wearing tight pants. How'd it go with you and Christy? Pretty well. She said I was responding positively to the treatment for the first day. 
You know, she knows so much about psychology. I really appreciate her taking time out to help me like this. She even invited me to the consciousness raising group tonight. She said my consciousness could use a bit of raising. You ready to go eat? We're a real community. We don't have to conform to the pressure of some man's idea of what a woman's role is for the simple reason that we don't have to listen to their warped ideas anymore. We have our own. And what's more important is we have each other. I think you'll like the women in this group. Oh, greetings. You must be Jane. Yes. It's so nice to meet you in bed. I've heard so much about you and your little group. Oh, well, positive, I hope. <laughs> but seriously, you women are just in time. Oh, uh, Jane, Christy knows the chair game, and she can help you set up your chair. If Christy's told you anything about our group, she's told you that we are all in the business of helping each individual woman discover, first of all, who she really is, and then with her present or now identity fully understood, to use the understanding of that identity as the first step toward a new identity, one chosen freely, without guilt, without fear, and most importantly, without pressure from the men who created your old identity in the first place. You'll find yourself becoming close, even intimate with the other women here. That's because we are a, a community, a community of sisters, in a way really more than sisters, because you can't choose your so-called real sisters. Okay, this is Christy, and this is Jane. I have to get back to my own chair now, so Christy, will you tell Jane the rest of the game, please? It's really very simple. See, when you're talking to the chair, you're talking to yourself. The chair is you. Hmm? It's not just thinking aloud. It's a chance to take a good, long, hard look at yourself. And don't pull any punches. Because the tougher the questions are, the more you learn about yourself. Confront yourself. It's the only way to get out of your present confusion. Be brave. A little respect now and then. Is that asking too much? Leave him now. He, he doesn't deserve you. Go ahead. Buy it. But would he go to Bethesda with you so you could further your career? And you worry about your weight, don't you? You always bring it up. Fire him. Pain? You call that pain? You always like spaghetti before Thursday night. Love. And they thought he'd been kidnapped, but he really wasn't. Um, they, they, they had to call it the Howie Patrol. Well, Professor Mercer Dunbar here with the uh, final lecture of the week in Economics 2110, and thank God it's Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the big game tomorrow. Campus is a literal beehive of activity. Coaching staff, of course, going bonkers over there trying to get the team prepared for the big game of the year. This is where we decide uh, whether we will canonize the coach or hang him in effigy. Well, we've devised a little laboratory experiment. Y'all get your own rat. There's 300 rats, but there's only four males. And part of your assignment is you've got to figure out which is which. <laughs> Don't kill them all, either. <laughs> Opposition team looks formidable, absolutely formidable. Big, gigantic, humongous guys against our poor little but courageous fellas. What, number? You got a number? Favorite number? Pull, pull one out of the air. Don't you weary of those? year after monotonous year about injuries. Some key players always injured, but miraculously recovers just before the kickoff.
do they all make such a big deal about a football game? I don't know, Jane, but believe me, they do. I can tell you this, too. The best performance I ever got out of a man was after we beat Alabama last year. Viv! <laughs> ever since then, I've never complained. Do you think we'll be able to break the dates after the game? I'm sure. I've done it a million times. But Phil and Randy are so nice. Listen, do you want to spend another night fending off Randy? Or do you want to find a guy that you can relate to? Well, okay. Besides, it's the only way Christy's plan will work. Jane, they're going to be so drunk by halftime, we could leave then and they never notice. Where is this party? A bunch of people got together and rented a chalet up in the mountains for the weekend. Oh, don't worry. There'll be guys crawling out of the woodwork. But what are you going to tell Randy and Phil? Oh, don't worry. I'll make up some excuse when they start the, well, we're going to go eat. Mm. After we get rid of them, we've got to meet Betsy and Susie at the sorority house. Oh, Viv, I've never been deceitful before. Oh, believe me, you have. And you will again, so don't let it bother you. God damn it, Earl. I told you to get tickets to the game early. They need to be sold out. What are you complaining about? This is more fun. physical battle between these two fine educational institutions. Bless the game hall and the gold posts that they may receive field goals and points after graciously. And forget not those of your children less fortunate than ourselves who hold tickets in the temporary bleachers in the south end zone. Amen.
two touchdowns to run that game. Randy, shut up. That was such an unreal game. Listen, where do y'all want to go eat? Here's a pretty good place down on. Can I tell you all we can't make it? You can't make it? What do you mean? Well, we've got a special sorority meeting tonight. What is this bullshit? Special sorority meeting? You have a special oh, sorority meeting after the game. Look, Jane, I told you they wouldn't understand. You guys never have any respect for what means something to a girl. It'll be over by midnight. I'll give you a call. Shit, I'll be drunk and passed out by midnight. Look, I'm sorry. What can I say? Thank you, Randy. I had a lovely game. Yeah, I had a lovely time at the game. Thank you very much. Me too. See ya. Terrific. Well, at least we got a fight. Hell yeah. Did I ever tell you about what happened after the Alabama game last year? It was hilarious. Bobby had his date, you see, and he had her down in the... No, 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 listen. No, this is a better one. This is a lot better one. He wins in the end. Yeah, what should I wear? Do you think this is okay? Jane, honey, I don't care what you wear, but today's a new day, and you've got to take that damn bra off. Yeah. I don't know. Jane, listen, nobody wears those things anymore. Girls don't wear them all the time. The guys up there will think you're a little kid, and you want to be sexy, don't you? Well, sure, but everybody feels so naked. I mean, I've seen other girls, and you can see everything. Is that all that's bothering you? Mostly. <laughs> then Band-Aids are the answer. Band-Aids? Sure. Stick them on your nips, they work wonders. Oh, Viv, I never thought of that. Wouldn't it hurt when they come off? No, it's the guy who takes them off. That's what he's doing. Here, go to it. I'm about to give up on Jane. I mean, completely. I mean, for good, too. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. No use beating a dead horse. <laughs> that might be a little more productive than dating Jane. That's a spirit. <laughs> and Bill Johnson is going to be there, and Jim Watkins, and Mark Garner, and Stan Williams. Is Stan going to be there? Sure, he's after Melissa. But Melissa's going with Greg. Greg Rowland? Sure. I thought they broke up. They did. Greg got Hey, are you nervous? Yeah, just a little. You know, at once. I mean, I'm not oh, sure yeah. I quite know what you to expect. Ah, uh, uh, there's really nothing to worry about. Off. I mean, everybody's a little loud. And probably a lot of guys will play with and everything, but people really know different in a chalet party than how you play. If you don't like the guy that comes up to you, just give him an excuse. Walk over and talk to somebody else. I'll be there. If you like him, uh, you've got nothing to worry about. I mean, that's why you're going, ain't it, to meet guys? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, shit, they're not all monsters. Yeah, really. No, but I don't know what to say. Oh, say anything. Hell, they don't care. They just like to hear themselves talk. Just listen and be pretty. You sure look nice in that sweater. You'll be stealing guys from me. Those professor? Yeah. Girl. Hey, boys. I thought you two had a couple of hot dates for tonight. This makes three of us. Those girls had some kind of sorority stuff they had to do. I don't know. I know why you go after the girls, but I just can't see why you go after the sorority girls. That's just not where it's at. It's like you've been talking to Christy again. <laughs> well, I felt sorry for her. I won 20 from her on the game today. You only, only better than 20, 20 bucks? bucks? Yeah, she's about broke. Oh. So things haven't worked out for you and Jane, huh, Randy? No, they haven't. Just about giving up on her, you know? I figured, I figured if I waited any longer, I'd go blind. Well, there's this girl that I know you're dying to meet. And there are a lot of girls I want to meet. The thing is, I want to meet them in the next five minutes. Well, she'll be right back. She just went to powder her nose. Oh, she sounds like a real winner. Yeah, what's her name, Earl? Jane? No, it's Patty. Hey, you guys. Randy, this is Patty. Oh, so you're Randy. Yeah, that's me. I've heard a lot about you from Earl. Oh, you have? Yeah, but I didn't think I'd ever get to meet you. Wow. Thanks, Listen, Earl. Patty, it's nice seeing you again. Uh, I've got a split. You're coming with me, aren't you, Phil? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've got to go, Randy. I've got to go, uh, brush my teeth. What's you can use my toothpaste. Okay, well, listen, uh, I'm sorry I can't stay, but Earl and I've got to play a little, uh, Rook tonight. Big game. Adios.
Are you from New England or somewhere? Yeah, I am. Uh, maybe sometime we can go up there. Uh, just you and me. Uh, listen, am I keeping you from anything? No, nothing important. Uh, why don't we go somewhere a little quieter than here where we can talk? Okay. Sit down. I'm Arnold. Would you like to get out of here? I mean, go away somewhere? all the times and you know you can high if you like to <laughs> while the guys do that oh are you voting yet <laughs> It's got this really great stereo system. It's Sears Best, but it's made by one of those Japanese companies. Time. Well, if you don't mind, well, what do you think? Just that, I mean, you turn me on. I mean, I, it might be your body or it might be the way you talk. I mean... Are you voting yet? Voting? Me! <sighs> Look, I didn't want to tell you this. I only got a year to live. Buffalo, New York. Wow! Well, we were you know, really, really gone on this this Colombian thing. So Tom's brother brought back from South America. Sharp. I'm Betsy Bingham. We're in your sociology class. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10.15. Oh, yes, I remember you. You do? Really?
she's been doing she's been doing mushrooms since mid I mean uh, say um, how don't you girls like to make an A in the class without even taking the final exam Wow an A without even taking the exam Wow Under and going on his steroid, you know. Jay, you shit, you gotta make those guys. Ooh, come on. Hey, fellas. How's tricks? Who's your friend? I like people like Jane. You met saw at the disco, remember? Ah, yeah. Hi. Ma'am. Hi. Bill. I guess we'll see you guys later. Yeah. See you later, Jane. It's just that you really turn me on. I mean, well, if you'd like, we could get away from here. Wow! How do you think yet? Hi. I'm Harrison. You want a ball? Want to sit on my face? <laughs>
Well, I finally feel like I'm getting settled at college. Our room looks great. I'm sure glad you suggested we get our bedspreads together, or I'm sure they would have clashed. We got orange corduroy bedspreads and yellow curtains with kind of a lacy pattern. I've been meeting lots of new people lately, and they're all really nice. Viv and I are getting along better than ever, and of course I'm getting to know all her friends too. At first I wasn't sure, but Viv and I really are a lot alike. I guess that's why we make such perfect roommates. Something I know you'll be happy about, I think my grades will be pretty good this semester. At least I've got my fingers crossed. All my professors are really sweet, and they all seem to like me. In college, that seems to be really important. I still can't understand why Mrs. Hodgkins back home warned us so much about teachers up here being impersonal. I couldn't imagine them being more friendly or interested in their students. I got a letter from Steve the other day, but I hadn't written him back yet. I guess I really don't know what to say. I remember now all those talks I had with y'all about going steady. You know, like when you told me a girl my age really shouldn't go steady too long because it kind of limits her experience and that doing a lot of dating helps you find the best marriage partner and all. It's funny, but all those things you and my youth group leaders used to say really do make a lot of sense to me now. I guess I'm growing up a little. Not that I regret going steady with Steve, but dating some other people sure has been a lot more, well, beneficial. Well, that's all I can think of. I guess I'd better quit writing and get fixed up. I've got a study date with a guy who offered to help me with my psychology assignment at nine tonight. He's really cute. Oh, and Mom, thanks for the brownies. And say hi to Benny, Baby, and Martha for me. I really miss them a lot. Love and kisses, Jane. Unless you're from Hollywood or New York, you don't often get the chance to see your hometown in a feature film. Now a Knoxville film company, High Test Films, has sold its products for national commercial distribution. Canon Films in New York has bought the rights to a movie made entirely in East Tennessee. And by the way, one of our photographers, Glenn Morgan, was a major participant. Newsman Art Miller has the details. You're looking at the first feature film ever made entirely in Knoxville and with local talent for national distribution. Incoming Freshman is the brainchild of Glenn Morgan and Eric Leewald, two ambitious filmmakers who graduated from UT with film degrees. Why do we say ambitious? Leewald and Morgan had to come up with $30,000 from 10 investors for this film. The two directors wrote, filmed, acted in, edited, and peddled this film. They screened 80 student auditions, people who had never made a movie before. How do they prepare for the movie? Eric Leewald. We'd seen enough of them. We did a little research at the local drive-ins, and after seeing 15 or 20 that were so terrible. You ever get tired of watching movies at the drive-in? Uh, uh, we got tired of it pretty quickly because they were, they, most of them were pretty bad. We, we were working with, it with totally unprofessionals, including ourselves, and we didn't know how it would turn out in the end. Uh, so you aimed for an R rating? Yeah, we aimed for that for, for, for as a the lowest common denominator being the R-rated drive-in market because it, yeah, it's a, a relatively simple market to hit. You don't have to have any necessarily any stars or any car chases or explosions. or So we thought with what we had as our resources that that would be the most reasonable thing to do. Incoming Freshman was filmed in just six weeks, but in all, 18 months of hard effort was put into this project. While UT is not identified in the film, Incoming Freshman is about a small southern town with a big university, about a naive girl who is faced with typical freshman problems, making the grades, meeting the guys, shaking off homesickness. What's it like working with student actors and crew? A lot of the normal things that everybody making a movie runs into, it turns out that the actual movie making skills get reverted to the very, your very last priority. You have to get everybody to show up on the set first and wear the same shirt that they wore the last time you shot that scene, which is very difficult. Now with Canon Productions backing, the expectations are even greater for incoming freshmen. 
Phrases that make any director get chill bumps. First run, national distribution. And that could mean big bucks when the picture is released next spring. At least Morgan and Leewald hope to get their first $30,000 back and their film on the screen. I was afraid, although willing for someone to take it and completely butcher it and call it uh, motorcycles from hell or whatever they wanted to do. And fortunately, the people who've picked it up, uh, they seem to really appreciate it for what it is, and all they want to do is polish it a little bit, and which they can do much better than we can. An average Hollywood movie costs $4 million these days, and since neither one of us has that kind of money... You or Glenn don't have $4 million? Well, of course we will in a couple of years after this plays around the country. But... Soon, incoming freshmen playing at a theater near you. This is Sam Brown reporting. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at 11. Now that your movie has premiered, what do you have to say for yourself? Well, we're really happy it uh, sold out and uh, a lot of people were had to be turned away, so it looks like we'll have a really good week here. And uh, even though it's a fairly different movie than, than we originally made, we're, we're ecstatic about the response we got. People seem to enjoy it very much. So you are pleased with the crowd? Yeah, very pleased with the crowd. In fact, they're moving it to the larger theater tomorrow night because they couldn't fit everybody in here. What, would, what advice would you have? Come on in here, Claire. Come on. What advice would you guys have for any would be movie producers who might be out in the TV audience tonight? Become a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the business. Huh? No. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I don't know if, I, if we had known how long it was going to take and all that was going to be involved, we would have been scared away from it. So, in a way, our, our naivety paid off because, uh, uh, yeah, had we known how, how, intense and how drawn out it was going to be we would have never thought it would have ever happened and would have never started where do you go from here oh uh if if enough people like it then we will be legitimate filmmakers suddenly and uh, we'll just start up new projects where we can get them you found fame i don't know and fortune <laughs> maybe possibly possibly uh neither one is certain both are hopeful <laughs> good, good, thanks. <laughs> Mary Moon, somehow I can't help but feeling that a star was born here tonight. Where do you go from here? Oh, that's so sweet of you to say. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Your response to the movie? Oh, uh, I enjoyed it. I really did. I, uh, don't think I could look at it too objectively right now, but I enjoyed what I saw. Look at it subjectively. I liked it, except for that pimple on my chin. <laughs> <laughs> what about the, uh, the alterations, the things that were, that were done to it that differ from the original? The scenes shot in New York were the scenes where the people were going, hi, y'all, and trying to affect a southern accent. Yeah. and. Uh, all those scenes were the ones that were uh, added to it after Glenn and Eric here had done the raw copy. What about your own future? Show business? No, thank you. Uh, I'd prefer to be a meter maid. <laughs> Somebody asked what size Band-Aids do you wear. You don't have to answer. <laughs> Super. <laughs> thank Bye -bye. you, man. All right, what did you think of the movie, Incoming Freshman? Well, I, I think this is bordering on high art, but not quite. But they're working the way there. I think it's fine to see local people doing such a fine job with such silly material. Thank you. Will it, will it succeed, in your opinion? Will it succeed? Well, uh, sure. I mean, it's here, isn't it? All these people are here. I got friends that couldn't even make it to see the movie. So it must be succeeding. Thank you. Give me your biased opinion then. What did you think of Incoming Freshman? I liked uh, Michael Shackelford the best, but uh, <laughs> other than that, I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. I think the changes, I saw the first version of it, and I think the changes, I didn't like them as well as I did the first version they made. Will this succeed? I hope so. I think it's a good movie. I think it's got a lot going for it, and it should. How about you? Delightful movie. Delightful. Would you care to elaborate? 
Oh, I just enjoyed the whole thing. I, I found that I noticed a difference between the scenes that were in New York and the ones that were here. I like the continuity of the one that was here without the New York scenes. Then you saw the original version? Yes. How about yourself? Well, I liked it better when I was in it. <laughs> you were one of the extras that sort of cut, got cut out in the New York version? Is that what Well, it was? no, you notice they talked about a consciousness raising group, and I was in the consciousness raising group, and of course they left us out. What do you think about that? I think that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> So a star is born tonight and a star is not born tonight. Well, two of us. What do you think about that? Oh, well, that's show business. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was kind of disappointed. Why is that? Well, I knew Leslie, and uh, I was just kind of disappointed because that wasn't exactly what I expected. <laughs> Never, despite that, do you think the movie will succeed? No. <laughs> Not go any further than the twin air. Pardon? Not go any further than the twin air. Uh, I don't think he'll uh, get an Academy Award. No. <laughs> you have a re reaction to the movie? Oh uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I mean, you know, what do you expect on Friday nights? I mean, you know, he come out here see a good movie. I thought it was pretty good. Anything you liked in particular? Uh. Well, I mean, you know, like all rated movies, I mean, you're going to expect, you know, a lot of skiing, so it was there. <laughs> How about you? You're a little young getting an all rated movie, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Do you care if we put you on TV? No. What did you think of the movie? It was great. <laughs> <laughs>an incoming freshman who comes from a small town to the big university and it's uh, uh, a light look at her dealings with getting adjusted to college life. You're going to premiere this, Eric, in a drive-in. Does that have any significance? Is there anything? Well, uh, we thought the whole light, uh, fun nature of the thing would make it most appropriate to be premiered in a drive-in and uh, we've got a the Twin Air people really liked the idea, and so did our distributor in New York. So I don't know how, f how usual this is, but uh, everyone involved thinks it's the appropriate and fun thing to do with the movie. You had, uh, of course, you all casted uh, the movie and had everything set up and had your own film. Then it went to New York. It came back in different form. Uh, how do you feel about that, Glenn? Well, I don't know. I'll, we'll know more after it comes out and see how people respond to it. The, uh, the national distributor in New York who bought the distribution rights to it and who made it possible for it to show nationally around the country, um, they made some changes, uh, some of which are pretty considerable, and, uh, which they think is going to make it more popular and uh, more viewable by a larger audience. And uh, we're, of course, not as pleased with it from a creative standpoint because it's been changed. Um, but we're, I think we're both reserving final judgment until we see what the audience response is to it. In what area were those changes? Were the well, the, uh, in many ways, the type of humor. We were, of all things, uh, accused of being too subtle and, or uh, uh, maybe not goofy or wild or crazy enough. So many of the, uh, they've added a few characters that are a little bit more, I don't know, that might, uh, uh, the drive-in audience might approve of more that are goofier. Uh. You started before, really, the, the trendy kind of thing in college movies, didn't you? You, were, you filmed this back in two or three years ago. Is that <coughs> right. right? Yeah, right, Jim. We filmed it, in the most of it, in the fall of 1976. And, um, so, uh, yeah, it, it's similar in some ways to Animal House. I'm sure that conclusion may be drawn by, that comparison may be drawn by some people. Uh, I don't think it's going to be near as popular as Animal House. But it can, we, we're sort of fortunate that 
Animal House came out, so perhaps our movie can capitalize on some of the uh, enthusiasm for a college comedy. Animal House proved that people will pay to go see a college comedy, so now I think a lot of the theater owners and various people are interested in, in showing a college comedy. Did you think that was coming, the college type humor? Were you thinking in that direction when you made it, or is it just something you wanted to do and it happened that way? It made the most sense for us to write that script. Since we were fresh out of college, it uh, reflected what we've been doing the last four years. So. You got an R rating on this movie. Did you set out to make an R movie, or what? Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, we, we researched a bit, and since we were very young and very inexperienced, as you can imagine, it's very difficult to get uh, businessmen to back your picture when you are 21 or 22 and straight out of college. Uh, and with our very limited resources, uh, it's the only market that was really open to us, since it's fairly inexpensive to make and the audiences aren't quite as demanding as, let's say, a, a major first-run picture. And another facet of it is, is the majority of pictures in the last 10 years since the ratings started have been R, even you know major studio pictures. That is the most popular market of all. Seems like everybody makes a, a big deal out of it being an R-rated movie. Um, it's not a porno movie. It's not um, anything. Uh, very few people would be offended by it. Again, it's very similar to Animal House in the, in the type of uh, nudity and language it has that gets it an R rating and the tone of it and everything. Millions of people have seen Animal House. I don't think too many people have been offended by that. So we can't, we do like to equate it to Animal House of in the, the people in that who have seen it. Probably right, right, right. Sure, it's not. Those it's people not. People who don't want to see it probably wouldn't see it. Anymore. Sure, it's I not. I mean, it's, it's not everyone's cup of tea. But it's not an X-rated movie. It's not a porno movie. It's you know, uh, I don't think it's anything to be ashamed of. Do you think further down the road you're going to be making different types of movies? Do you plan on? Do you have anything else in mind uh, in the near future, or what is in store now? A lot of that depends on how this one does. What what happens for us? depends largely on, on what if, if this one does any business, um, how popular it is, how people respond to it. And uh, yeah, I think we'd probably both like to make another movie. What did you learn from this one that you could plug in next time? Where, where were some of the, the mistakes that you made that you could you can look back on and say, you know, we could smooth that out if we were to do it again? Well, uh, we do a lot more pre-planning. I think the uh, rule of thumb is that we should have listened to is six months of pre-planning, six weeks of actual production, and then six months of post-production. And uh, people don't think about the short time that you actually are in there working because everything is so expensive. But uh, we would have spent a good deal more time getting everybody ready and, and preparing, preparing the film. Not that we didn't plan, but we didn't know what to plan as much as we would right. now. I mean, you know, a lot of that, we just did it by the seat of our pants, a lot of it. Mm -hmm. we, um, now that we've done something, we know what occurs, we'd be a lot more prepared to do another one, be a lot simpler. Yeah.